The Unfiltered by Jade. Jade. Welcome to The Unfiltered by Jade, where we get out of the box and dive into topics that are sidelined. I look forward to entertain, educate, and inspire. Feel free to like, share, subscribe, donate, and make everybody know about this. Beats by RB Records, a proud sponsor of the Unfiltered by Jade. Shopping assistance Jamaica takes the stress away. Our services include online and local shopping in Jamaica for individuals and businesses, personal shopping, purchasing of company and office supplies, importing and exporting small packages across Jamaica and worldwide, helping you to find unique gifts and items for all events and occasions. Contact us at 876-919-5195. Five. Shopping Assistance 2015 at gmail.com. Follow Shopping Assistance on Instagram at Shopping Assist JA, at Twitter at Shopping Assist 5, and Facebook at The Shopping Assistance. Shopping Assistance, your style, your budget. Welcome back to the Unfiltered by Jade. Today we have with us Dr. Joan Good, and she's here to talk to us about how to run a successful business as a woman. So before I even intro, before I even ask her to come on and start talking, let me tell you a little bit about her. So she is the founder and CEO of Business Startup Marketing Solutions and JW Publishing. She is an award-winning global CEO, an author, an international speaker, 2016 U.S. Woman of State nominee, 2019 U.N. Global Philanthropy nominee, 2021 Global Chamber of Commerce, 100 Successful Women in Business awardee. There is so much more. But um, I'm thinking to myself, is if it is that I start reading the rest of the things, this may just be it for the podcast. Um, <laughs> we need to get, we need to also get some information about how we can, as women, get to these, you know, get these titles also. How we can reach to these. So, I want to know. You mm-hmm. have so many things on the media built. I want to know, as a as a woman, how is it that you run a business? Do women run businesses on emotions, or do we run it on logics? Um, well, Jade, thank you so much for having me. I'm sure. really grateful to be on your platform. Sure. Um, I pray abundant blessings, and um, I pray that as your listeners listen to your podcast, not only will they leave feeling inspired and motivated, but they will actually put in practice what you are um, and your guests are helping them to um, hear, to achieve, and to be stirred up with. So to, um, to answer your question, I do believe that um, what well, one of the first things um, is I don't like putting labels on people. Right. But I do believe that it would be unfair for me to say whether or not women on the whole mm-hmm. lead with emotions or logic. What I will say is that um, some women do lead with emotions and there mm-hmm. are some who who do lead with logics. And mm-hmm. um, it's only fair for us to kind of um, give each other the space to grow. I, I, I know for myself, when I just started out, I probably started out with emotions. I uh, mine wasn't a, a, a call or, or response kind of action. Okay. I pretty much started out of the whole idea of um, being rejected by a whole bunch of people mm. um, and corporations that I was applying to. So the backdrop of my story to answer your question is um, 
I, uh, from before leaving Jamaica, I had a, a, a bachelor's degree from the University of the West Indies. I had a right. law degree from the University of London and a whole bunch of experience right. with, with marketing and PR and managing people, managing products. And so obviously I assumed that when I um, came to the U.S. that I would just, you know, just mm. dive right into the mix of things. And then, you know, <laughs> I would be the next lawyer or the next Judge Judy or something. Obviously, right. it does not work like that. So mm -hmm. um, not only were they requiring that I went back to law school for, um, I think, two or three more years. Really? Um, yes, I was because the, ju the jurisprudence is different. This is um, UK and Jamaica. Obviously, um, law in America is different. So uh, I, I would definitely have to go back to school. So I was like, mm-mm not going to do that. Nope. So I started to apply two jobs um, and um, I was applying for upper management positions. Right. Again, right there, they needed to start me from the bottom. And I was like, nah, it ain't going to work. Like uh -uh. Um, here it is, you know, in Jamaica, I was already a Jamaican millionaire. Let's, let's, let's kind of decipher that because right. there's a difference. Right. No, I, know, I get that. Yeah, I know. I know. But, you know, sometimes you, you say, oh, you know, I've been a millionaire before and people are like, oh, really? Yeah. You know, uh, you you're familiar. I'm so mm -hmm. glad you told me that <laughs> <He's> like, <laughs> yep. you remember me from back then. So uh -huh. it, we were multimillionaires. I mean, we we had signed one contract with um, a telephone company, which was over 600,000 Jamaican, not to mention other contracts and music and everything that we were doing. Uh -huh. So I, obviously I would not want to come to America and start with uh, eight million and $10. Right. Uh -uh. But that's the offers I was getting. Those were the offers I was getting. I I was like, what is going on? So I remember um, when, you know, the rubber met the road and I was like, maybe I, I'm going to have to take this job. So I remember I interviewed for a job. They told me that they could pay $10. And, um, you know, even though I interviewed well, that's the starting rate. And, the, you know, if, if, if things work out, they would increase me to about $13. So oh. I remember going into my car and driving home and I started crying and I called one of my great friends, um, Dr. Charlotte East. And I said, you know, I was like, hey, I got the job. She was like, "Yay!" You know, in her Jamaican vernacular, she said, "Tell me how much I get, girl. Tell me how much I get." <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, so I said, "Oh, I'm getting a whopping ten dollars an hour." <laughs> and then the phone went dead. She was like, you, 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 "You're kidding me, right?" I said, "Nope, that's what there's." And she said, "Joni, you're gonna take that." I'm like, "I need the money." And so on my way, you know, um, I, I, I was talking to God, and I was like. You know, why would this happen? I've already gone through the trauma, um, you know, in having to leave Jamaica right. on how I left. Right. And if you don't know, just go pick up my first book from Brokenness to Victory. Already, my story. Oh, oh, already, already read it. <laughs> so having, you know, having to leave on that, going through, walking through that public shame and coming here, I'm like, God, what are you doing? Mm -hmm. But, you know, sometimes God, ha he has to strip you to build you up. He doesn't want you to take the baggage of yesterday into today. And and so he really has to empty you. Sometimes he has to humble us. And um, went home and, you know, I heard the word SWOT analysis. Now, I knew that term from the business um, uh, field. Right. Mm -hmm. Didn't know what that meant in terms of personal. And so, but I did exactly what I knew it was. Um, so I wrote down my personal strengths, weaknesses, and opportunities and threats. Mm -hmm. and when I realized that I had more strengths than weaknesses and when I had more opportunities than threats, I decided to start my business. So to end, that's a long-winded way to answer. No, that, but that's good. That's good. That's a good. That's actually a good, a good background. On it. Mm -hmm. I started based off emotions. I was like, I'm not going to take all of this that I have and go build somebody else's kingdom. No, nope. I can create my own legacy. Mm -hmm. And so that's how I started. So obviously, over time those emotions moved into the logic realm. Wow. I, you know, I healed from the rejection. I realized that them rejecting me was actually not a rejection. It was, uh, it was actually acceleration for me to look within mm -hmm. to say, I have what it takes to be them. Right. Like I'm going to build yes. them up when mm -hmm. I have what it takes to be them. And so I, I, I move from emotions into logic. Now, the sad part is that some people, some women do stay over in the emotional realm. Okay. And you see this in business where 
they treat business like um you know it's 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 a, a hustle mm -hmm. you either are a hustler or you're a business owner you yes. can't be both you know yes. so as a business owner you have to operate your business like other businesses do yes you can't close shop because um you know you're going on vacation no. uh, there's a difference with resting um you and this is why you need systems and you need people in place you can't um you know what they call it clap back at everybody who says oh, something no, you, can't. Uh -uh. you can't you 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 know you can't just respond to everything and you can't be everywhere you can't be everybody's friend you know all of these things are things that you realize after you move from emotions into logic uh -huh. you know and you you understand how to operate your business well you understand how to use business credit and not use your personal credit you understand how to separate your accounts you understand how to make sure that you're serving people uh -huh. and not money you understand how um, a sale is not a sale it's actually a service so when you move from the emotional side you go over into the logic and that's why i'm a firm believer that yes there are women who um leave from the emotion side but if they allow themselves to heal and if they educate themselves on proper business acumen, they can get to the logic level and lead well. I feel like just throwing away all these questions because you, you just <laughs> <laughs> you just gave you just gave us a more full of information a I'm, while ago. Oh, I was always that kid when the teachers would give me one sentence and I'm giving her a whole essay. She's like, Joe, I said one sentence. I'm like it's hard. No, well, I mean, but you know, the funny thing is, you gave a twist on how emotions actually can push you to your goals yes and that's funny because normally we don't look at emotions pushing you to your thing. we don't yeah, look at it as a good thing we always tend to look at it as a negative thing mm -hmm. so that is also that's a good point that you made mm -hmm. um in a world where you know we have a lot of men that are dominating i know you know women now are leading mm -hmm. But you have a lot of men still dominating businesses. How can a woman run a successful business um, with these men? And sometimes don't even feel like they are competing because so many times mm -hmm. I see like women saying, oh, well, we can do this better than men. So it becomes a competition more than, you know, yeah. let, let me try to build an empire. Let me try to run a good business. Yeah. Um, it's unfortunate that it's always us against them, you mm -hmm. know, when that's not the original intent that God had in place. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, it's the world is dominated by men, but women can be as successful. Yes. Um, there are some women who are better successful um, mm -hmm. as it relates to leading. I think as, as a woman leader, you have to put blinders on. You cannot look at the competition. I like to tell my clients when I'm coaching that when you become the product or the service, then you you don't see competition. Right. You know, you 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 become the competition. Right. <laughs> so True. you can't. Yeah, you can't look at what they're doing. I always say, find your spot, find your niche, find your bright light, find where you shine the most, and it will never be like somebody else. I think um, whoever coined the phrase that comparison is a thief of all joy was absolutely correct because there are some people who are unsuccessful even though they are very talented even though they are creative even though i mean they could uh, uh they could encourage an eskimo to invest in ice you know <laughs> yes they, they are not yes. successful because mm -hmm. they keep looking at everybody else and they keep looking oh men are being paid uh you know 2.5% higher than women. So what, you know, go out there and kill what it is that you do and mm -hmm. set your own goals. Like for, right. for instance, you know, I teach my clients to set their goals, um, not just annually, because, you know, um, I help people to start seven figure businesses. And so sometimes they'll look at it and I'm like, they're like, I can't make a million dollars. And I say to them, okay, let's break that down. Let, 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 let's, let's, let's see, let's, let's dive in a little bit. So I ask them, so a million dollars, how much do you think a million dollars is per month? And they start doing the math. Uh, they're like, um, um, 80, 83,000. I'm like, okay, how much is that per week? We end up with 20, 20 like 20,000, 833 or 21,000. I said to them, is there a product or service that you can curate to make 21,000 per week? And they're like, oh, that's hard. It's not because 
that's that's 20 that's 2976 per day right oh. if you are running a business where you have several products and services 2900 per day is duppy money like seriously oh, but you have to yes. break it down to the bare bone when you look at the million it looks hard but when you break it down to the bare bone selling 2900 for one day that's like two courses if you have a boutique that's like selling maybe 10 items you know if you if you if you add those two so let's say you have a, a, a program where you're selling a course but you're also selling books and you're selling products right. that is you know the two clients and you have that but mm -hmm. here we're here's where people fall short short consistency yes consistency you'll hear people say co content is king consistency is queen you have to stay going at it in order to make that six or seven figures like when maces don't close because um, rain is falling but you have people are running their business and if, if the weather pattern change and they they're you know close business the close business mm -hmm. and then they expect to make seven figures it mm -hmm. just don't go like that so consistency and keeping those blinders on and making sure you're diving into what you're called to do and i often tell people not because you like something means that's the thing that you should go after because mm -hmm. what you like may not be what the market likes and True. so let's say you like doing hair but doing hair means you have to stand behind a chair uh, seven days a week. That's not going to make you a lot of money and it's going to make you stressed out and tired and you're not going to make as much. However, you may love doing hair, but you can make wigs. You can make courses about teaching other people how to do hair. Right. You, know, you can, there's so many things. So maximize on what exactly, you can do. Exactly, to mm -hmm. leverage and monetize just the passion of, passion of loving hair. Mm -hmm. So you always have to sit down and make the thing work. Just because you like something, look at what the market is doing, right? Uh, and then you, you, um, you appeal to the market, not to yourself, because you ain't buying from yourself. So that's True. why you have to appeal to the market. Once you do those things, you, you know you'll you'll be successful. We don't care what men are doing. You you no. do, you you know your call to do. Mm -hmm. So after calculating and using my, you know, I've been calculating here because you know, <laughs> and breaking down as you're mm -hmm. saying, breaking down and making sure that you get all the calculations right because I don't think we normally look at that big picture. We yeah. just look at the bigger figure and say, mm -hmm. hey, we're not able to attain that. We're not able to reach that. Um, but as I said, when you break it down and you go to the day, how much is that you're making a day? How much is that you're making a week? How much exactly. is that you're making a month? Exactly. Then you figure out, hey, I can't do this. You just have exactly. to. Exactly. And you yeah. have to give your money assignment. When you don't give your money assignment, it will find an assignment. And I, uh, oftentimes when I'm speaking, I use this example. If you come into some money, so let's say uh, uh, last year or whenever those people got the stimulus check, right? Um, mm -hmm. A lot of people did not have an assignment. And so what they did, they squandered their money. Now, if you gave it an assignment and say, hey, I'm going to start this business with my, um, uh, was it what, 1200 $1,500? i am going to, I'm going to um, invest in some stocks. If you give it an assignment, then it will work for you. But when you yes. don't, that's when the car breaks down. That's when the pipe break, break in the house. That's when everything pops up because money is an energy. It's aware that yeah. you know, it's coming into your hands. So it will find an assignment for you to do. So this is why you have to do money goals. You have to change your money story and make sure that you're giving your money assignment. Once you do that, then it will work for you. I want to know, how is it that with everything that you do, how is it that you balance your wife, your mom, your own businesses? How is it that you maintain everything and be successful in every area? Um, if I were to say that it's, it's easy, I would be lying. It's not easy. Um, you, you're definitely pulled in all kind of different directions and, um, business, it, business, mom, mommy and wife is just what some people know of me, but behind the scenes, I'm, you know, I'm a minister, I'm, uh, uh I'm an auntie, you know, I, I, 
I, I have to drop things to go ensure that, you know, my niece is taken care of if, if my sister is not available. Um, you know, we have we have family issues like everybody else. So you have mm -hmm. to tend to this, you have to tend to that. You know, the church is calling you to do this, to do that. Um, I'm speaking, so, you know, I'm always traveling as well. So there's a lot that goes into that. And then most recently, I took up real estate investment. So, you know, oh. I'm running Airbnbs, I'm running short-term rentals. Sometimes I miss the emails and I'll get a threatening message from Airbnb. <laughs> oh, you validated the principles, please respond. And I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> so, so just like the money, you have to give your time and assignment. So literally, mm -hmm. um, you know, I set my time. I spend like six, if, if you, it, this is how you have to do it. You have to set boundaries. Okay. First of all, you cannot be accessible to everybody and everything. True. So, um, again, when I was in my emotional or what some people call the soulish um, stage of my life, uh -huh. every time when the church called, I thought I had to say yes. Because uh, I didn't understand that my yes wasn't, I thought my, I, I thought that when I said yes to my leaders, I was saying yes to God, which is not true. Because no. sometimes we say yes to men, but our hearts are hard in saying the yes, we don't mm -hmm. want to do it. So it's not a yes to God. Right. So sometimes a yes to God means a no to men. Right. Um, like just before I got on here, I got an invitation to speak at a particular conference and I had to turn them down because it was just not in keeping with um, my biblical standards, you know, right. I don't want to stand on a platform with people who are lying to people saying God said when the, they didn't, because, right. mm -hmm. you know, right. I, mm -hmm. I'm going to be an endorser mm -hmm. exactly of the lies. So I had to, um, you know, turn that down. Right. So, so that's how you have to manage your time. You have to prioritize. You have to know what serves you, um, what serves God, what serves your family, what serves your legacy. And so I'll, uh, you know, you separate your time. If it is that you're going to work. Um, and then also you have to know if you are working in your business or on your business. So if you do both, for example, let's say if you do both, you have to say, okay, I'm going to spend three hours working in the business. What does that look like? Sending out invoices, responding to emails, um, making phone calls, you know, making sure clients are okay. And then let's say you take three hours to work on the business. What is that? Uh, marketing, um, promotions, anything that causes the business to grow. Um, and then maybe, you know, obviously you can't set time to be with your family because your family comes first. Right. So in between that, you have to know that you're giving them enough time as well, especially with people who have children. Right. And then obviously, you know, it's the same. You, see, you, you, you set your date nights. You make sure that you're giving your spouse the attention that they need. Uh -huh. So it's just you have 24 hours in a day after you take your six or eight, whatever hours of sleep. Whatever you're left with, you have to make sure that you divvy that up among all of the things that you do and ensure that everybody is properly served, including yourself. Because you don't want to be out here being a hero for everybody while- Except you know, yourself. Exactly. And then I you get taken out by COVID and COVID gets blamed for everything. No, it's because you weren't taking care of yourself. <laughs> Your vitamins, you weren't exercising, you weren't drinking your water. <laughs> and so, listen, people don't even get the cold anymore. Everything is COVID. Like, come Everything. on. Bro. <laughs> nah, nah. <laughs> oh, <it>. my <laughs> Go take your oh. vitamins. <laughs> yes, they go drink your water. Right? Drink some Cersei, something. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Oh, um, stereotypes, stereotypes and myths of female owned businesses. I mean, I think we have covered some of them in terms mm -hmm. of like for emotions. Mm -hmm. And so um, there is one I, I hear. What, what The question I asked you before in terms of how you balance it, I've heard it many times to say a woman doesn't always know how to balance. And I mean, that's generalizing also, but a yes. woman doesn't know how to kind of balance family and business and all the personal things because what's going to happen is that something is going to be left um, not taken care of or a husband is going to be left without being taken care of or a child or you know or or they normally say the woman normally focuses on the business and the children and they leave out some other things so those are some of the stereotypes I want you to address some of those. Well, first of all, um, when God came in the garden, he didn't ask Eve where she was. He asked Adam, where are you? So Mercy. Fix that. So if the, man, 
<laughs> the man is in his rightful role, and I say this all the time, then the woman won't have to be working as hard. Let's get that out the way. Secondly, um, if he understands leadership, then he will be leading with her. So yes. there wouldn't be as much of a issue with him being left out of stuff, mm -hmm. right? But the issue is a lot of um, people who make these complaints, if men make these complaints, because they're not in position. So Adam, find your place. Like, <laughs> <laughs> listen, I tell people all the time, if I had it my way, I would be on a beach every day, like <laughs> sipping orange juice. <laughs> Um, um, you know, and just doing nothing, but obviously I'm not built like that, by the way, because right. when I have nothing to do, I feel so idle. I'm like, how do people uh -huh. not do stuff? I don't know. I'm finding I don't all know. kind of things to fix. Like I'll, I'll unravel stuff just to fix them back. Cause I'm like, that <laughs> be that I have nothing to do. There must be something to do. <laughs> but, um, you know, I, <laughs> I'm just joking, but I said all of that to say, if the man is in his rightful position, then he won't be left behind. Granted, there are some women and it's not just women. There are some people because men are like this too, when they get tunnel vision and uh -huh. they're so focused and so driven on one thing that they do, um, you know, leave their family out of the picture. But True. I would say that's for the bigger uh, majority. The bigger majority is that a lot of women are carrying the weight of both the man and the woman. A lot of women are being mommy and daddy. A oh, lot wow. of women are picking up the slack where men have fell off. And yes. so they they can't be, you know, I had this conversation with another interviewer who um, told me that she didn't have a great relationship with her mother. And um, she, I, when I asked why, she said because um, her daddy was her hero. He was her king. He was at all of her school plays. Um, he was, you know, everywhere that she, you know, that she had a game, all of this good stuff. But her mom wasn't. And I said, okay, so we're where was your mom? She was always at work. So I said, okay, let's 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 mm -hmm. let's back up a little mm -hmm. bit. Let's 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 dissect what's going yes. on here now. Let me just play therapy therapist mm -hmm. a little bit. Oh yes. <laughs> I said, first of all, um, what you need to do, you need to have a conversation with your mom, woman to woman, not mother to daughter. Okay, let's do woman to woman. And find out why was she always at work? I asked the person, I said, where was your dad while your mom was at work? Her dad couldn't keep a job, so he was always at home. I said, boom, there you go. There you go. So the mother had to be both mother and father. She yes. had to make a choice to keep a roof uh -huh. over your head, keep food on your on your plate, make sure you go to school, make sure you can play all these games, make sure uh -huh. you got all these medals. So you have to cut her her slack. Either yes. she was going to be at the games with your dad and y'all would be living on the street. Uh -huh. And not I having thought. any game. But a lot of times women make these sacrifices and the kids do not understand. And so they grew up with resentment and offense, yes. not yes. realizing that all of this was done because your daddy wasn't in place. Yes. Okay. And so um, stereotypes and myths are, again, we have to go back to giving people their rightful, um, you know, their rightful due diligence, make sure that we're not just putting a blanket on everybody. Yes, there are some women who are overly driven, um, who are um, overly masculine, quote unquote, I guess, because uh -huh. you know, they want to say, I'm a boss, I'm a boss, I'm uh -huh. a boss. Oh, yes. uh -huh. And that comes from inadequacies. And yes, I said it. So yes, you know, if anybody wants to get in my DM, she that's fine. Uh -huh. That comes from inadequacies, because if you if if you never grew up hearing that you are a queen, that you're, you know, you are perfect as you are and all these things, you'll grow up with an inferior complex thinking that you have to prove yourself to everybody, which yes. happens in the workplace and it happens when, when you own a business. Yes. Um, and I never got that. So I'm not saying that I'm better than anyone, but remember I started out by saying I had to heal from all of yes. that. Yes. So when you get to the place where you heal, you don't have to prove nothing to anybody. Your work will speak for you. Yes. Your clients will speak for you. So yes. you don't you you earn that level of boss kind of um, respect where you don't have to go around beating your chest or touting that you're a boss or uh -huh. wanting to compete with the boys and that that that's just rubbish to me. Uh -huh. you know? Be a lady. 
you know, be a woman. That's how God made you. Yes. Be feminine. Um, um, be, and, and this is why we even have to read the scripture properly where it says the weaker vessel. It's not saying that you're weaker in strength. Right. It means that you are like a flower. You're more delicate. You know, that, that's that's the, the, the actual um, definition of the word when you look at it in Hebrew. So right. you're, you're the, del the more delicate sex. So in other words, be that feminine woman and let your work speak for you. But you don't have to be out here trying to be Tarzan when you're Jane. Right. True. Who won't catch you if you're Tarzan, Jane? Nobody. Nobody. Like, nobody. So, <laughs> <laughs> so, nobody. So a lot of these stereotypes and myths we have caused upon ourselves. But if we allow ourselves to heal and if we allow ourselves um, our work to speak for it, and if we are operating in the right vein and in the right purpose, then we won't have to be a part of the status quo or a part of these stereotypes. <laughs> so all of y'all out there, didn't she? <laughs> Speaking of that, how important is self-confidence when starting a business? Because mm -hmm. um, I t people tend to not be so confident. You know, I don't want to start a business because everybody out there has started business mm -hmm. since COVID. Or I don't want to, I don't want to write a book. Everybody out there is writing a book. I don't want mm -hmm. to. So at the end of the day, you're just sitting down at home doing nothing because everything it is that you're doing, you're not confident about it. How is it that women go about getting some self-confidence to start businesses? How is it that we buy cars when everybody's driving? Mercy. No, man. How is, it no live, man. how is it we live in houses when everybody wants to live in a house? Nobody wants to live on the street. So that, for me, does not fly. Because <laughs> when people say that, I'm like... Okay, let's mm, rewind. Like, you don't want to start a business because everybody got a business, but at the same time, you're going to take your money and support everybody else who has a business because you don't want to start a business. You buy food, you buy clothes, you buy shoes, you buy gas. You buy... These people started businesses to serve you. Uh -huh. So you can do the same to serve them. And because people don't understand the concept of business, that's why they don't want to start business. I just posted on Instagram, um, I think it was yesterday or uh, maybe this morning. But I, you know, I said everybody isn't made for business, but everybody should have financial security. True. And so when you, uh, the pandemic taught so many people that you thought that your job secured you until the pandemic hit oh yes now, if did. that wasn't a lesson on 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 honing in on what you your god-given investment your god-given real estate and creating financial security i don't know what will send you a message like everybody needs to have some fallback plan it doesn't have to be a business it could be investments you know uh -huh. but you have to have something that is secure because some investments are not secured and so a business is a great way to set up a legacy for your family because guess what and we all know this you cannot pass a job down to your children but you can pass down businesses houses land and these things to them so so when people say you know um they can't it's, it's, it's even for me, it's deeper than a lack of confidence. It's a lack of education. Wow. It's a lack of education because they're, listen, a lot of these people are not confident to start a business or write a book, which I do both, but they'd be confident to wear these orange wigs twisted up on their head. <laughs> looking like some bird nest. You that confident, <laughs> but you're not confident to start a book. Come on, sis, stop the mess. Stop it. Stop it. <laughs> you that confident and you will tell yourself i'm that chick but you are not confident enough to secure some legacy for yourself or for your yeah. children yeah. or knowing that you don't you know if you feel like laying in the bed one day you're not gonna get a letter saying you know if you don't come in or get the pink slip the next day no you have to set your own time set your own boundaries and you can do the best way to do that is to make sure that you're operating in your sense of purpose whether again whether it's a book whether it's a business whether it's a side hustle whether whatever it is you must ensure that as a woman you have some level of financial security you cannot depend on a spouse Okay, so, I've seen people depend on depending on their husbands, and then the, the he passes, and then he realized that the husband left everything to the mama or the cousin or some sad chick or some, uh -huh. some you know. It's oh, just yeah. weird how people live. Like, yep. you, know, you can't do that. So 
I mean, my first marriage taught me that, you know, having invested all of myself and, you know, started the business doing that. And then in the end, um, in court, it was said, oh, you were just doing what a wife should do. Because guess uh -oh. what? We didn't have no contract. We didn't sign no paper. We were just two people. We, we you know, we're married and we're going to do this. And so you have to secure yourself. That's why I, this time I was like, mm-mm. Uh -oh. Because uh -oh. if you if you've gone through something and you don't apply the lessons that you've learned, you're going you to really, you haven't really learned anything. Yeah, and you're forever going to um, go around that mountain like the children of Israel until you learn the lesson and, and until you apply. Because sometimes they learn the lesson but they don't apply it. So you know, build up some confidence. And if you so, don't, it's not confidence. Then it's priority. It's where your priority is. It's priority. Is it's it's lack of education. You know. Um, uh, because because let me let me use another an, a, analogy when you when you go to school like you know the first time you went to school a lot of people you know probably went to school at three years old six whatever age you went to school most people that first day they end up crying they don't uh -huh. want to go to school right nope um so you don't go to school because you want to you go to school because you had to Yes. It's the same with financial legacy. Take your emotions out of it. You're not doing this because you want to. You're doing it because you have to. Yes. You can't use water to pay for. for, for you, you have to have some level of security. So uh, make sure you take self out of it. Take self out of it and make sure that you are educating yourself on the process of legacy building, of wealth maintenance, because a lot of people start, but they don't maintain it. We see this in the music industry all the time. You know, all the time. come into some money, you get some big check, you don't maintain it. So after four or five years, you become a one hit wonder. And all because, the time. Yeah, because you never saved it, you never um, monetize it, you never invested into other businesses. Look at Rihanna, right? Mm -hmm. She's doing everything else. Uh, exactly. So her, everything so else. her music made her famous, but her business made her a billionaire. Now that yes. will preach. Yes. That is something. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. And you know, the, 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 I don't think people have seen it. I've said it to someone the other day. You know? I mm -hmm. said, you notice that Rihanna has really gone and invested more into the business side. No, yes. that's what she is really focusing on. Mm -hmm. The business side of things. It's not, I mean, the music is there, but her business. Well, and that's not when I heard. Mm -hmm. That's, 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 that is such a poignant lesson for other people in the same industry and similar. Yes. Her fans are clamoring. They're calling every day. When are we going to get new music? Are... She is so focused. Remember I spoke about Blinder. She is so focused that she don't, she don't care about y'all because y'all spend, what, $100 on a ticket. That can't do nothing because by the time management and everybody get paid, she's left with nothing. She is focused on leaving a legacy. So, yes, yeah, she heard y'all. You know, uh, she left y'all some old music. Go listen to those. But right now she's focusing on her <laughs> business. She's focusing on the thing that is paying her. She's focusing on the business that is supporting her. Yes. So that's what she's focused on. Yeah, eventually she'll go back to music, I'm thinking, because now, you know, once you've made it and you set it, um, you know, you know with business, it's, just, it's a rinse and repeat. You yes. Pete was working for you. So yes. she's doing that now. But she took the time. She mm -hmm. took the time to build her legacy. And yes. that's then that's the issue with some people. They've put notoriety over building a legacy. So yes. yeah, my name is being called. Everybody know me. I got I got five thousand likes and, and fifty million followers. But how much are they helping you to make? Wow. That's what you have to ask yourself. It's notoriety. Is it going to be notoriety or is it going to be stability? I was about to ask, you know, to help some other woman out there to help them in terms of business opportunities. But I'm not going to do that. You know why? <laughs> because I think people need to research on things. Yes, a lot of people don't research. And there are so many opportunities out there. Yes. Like when I told when I tell you that there are so many opportunities. And, and, and the thing is, this is one thing I tell people. You have to look within. You have to see the questions that people are asking you. Pay attention to them. When I started my publishing company, do you know how I started? Obviously, I wrote my first book. So for uh -huh. those people who believe I don't need to write a book, they're short, they're short thinkers. They're not looking at the big picture. They're just looking at writing a book. 
Uh-huh. I didn't know that writing a book would, would turn me into a speaker. I didn't know that writing a book would, would allow me to own a seven-figure business. I didn't uh-huh. know all this. And yeah. I didn't know that it would allow me to help other people to put uh-huh. their stories out there to become six-figure earners as well. Y'all can Google me, uh-huh. right? Go on my Facebook page. Just last night, one of my clients posted, we helped him to start his business last year in the pandemic. And in less than six months, he was making six figures. Uh And when he came to me, he came to me with zero dollars, but he had a passion. And I was able to coach him into creating a business that, and he has been on so many TV platforms that we got him on because we do media, PR, um, and, and, um, and marketing. But I Uh said all of that to say, you have to know what it is that you're called to do. So when I wrote that first book and people were asking me questions and I was answering them, I was like, hmm, all these calls, all these, no, I need to do something about this. So uh-huh. all that, all them little free advice you'll be giving, look into the free advice. Should this uh-huh. be free? No. And so, uh-huh. and so that's how I actually started. I started with coaching people first on how to write their book until I, I build a publishing company with yeah. staff with with press with yes. printing a whole publishing company that does everything that's how i started my publishing company and the book was what um turned me into a speaker as well about a week after a week or two after the book was out i was invited to speak at a woman's retreat and uh-huh. i wasn't expecting anything and they gave me a check for 2500 us and i was shocked i was like uh-huh. get paid to speak oh yes <laughs> the rest is history now this is going back year oh, what i mean this was 2000 and that was years ago. Yeah. So, so, so this is what I'm talking about. So it's the questions that people were asking me that told me that, oh, you are an expert in something. Yeah. So you have to look at what you're an expert in. 10 year old who can tie his shoelace or his tie really well. He's an, he is an expert or a hero to the three year old who's looking up. So yes. you are that 10 year old to somebody who don't know what they're doing. Yes. Find your niche, find your area of genius. And that's what you need to monetize. So that's what I monetize. And that built into a second business, um, business startup and marketing, where people kept coming to me again, asking me how to start their business. How do I register? What is, you know, what are my, what are, what are some grants that are out there? What, where, where do I get funding? All of this information. And can you help me with marketing? So I started a business. And on top of that, I started an academy so i can either help you to start the business or i can teach you to start it so i looked at the questions that people were asking and provided a service based on yes. the questions <sighs> i think i've been a victim of that not even a victim i think i've caused that on my own so but i mean we'll talk about that after but in terms of when people call and they want information you they know you have that information yes and we just tend to sometimes give it out freely i would also help you know i can actually start giving out this information for a cost It's a business. Create something that people can easily click on and book a consultation with you. And that's how, because at first they were just booking consultations, $150 a pop, you know, Mm -hmm. and then the consultation, and this is the thing, the consultations moved into something. A lot of times they consult with me and they're like, oh, it sounds so difficult. Can you do it for me? I'm like, sure. So that's the thing. I spoke about this just yesterday on Clubhouse. Build a product plus the service. So the service is a consultation. The product is I can do it for you, right? Oh, yes. So you're yes, creating yes. the product. So some people will buy both the product and the service. Some will buy the product only. Some will buy the service only. Either way, you're making money different ways with the one thing that you do. So with the one thing that I do, I'm making, I have about eight different streams of income with the mm-hmm. one thing that, that I do. That you do. Mm-hmm. And I that's see. facts. Yep. That, that's how you go out there, guys and get your business ruling. Mm-hmm. So if it is that person who wants to get in contact with you, how can mm-hmm. they do so? Okay, so um, they can call my office if they have access to phone. I think everybody does. My office number is 561-412-7772. They can uh, follow me on social media. I'm on Instagram at Joan Wright Good. That's J-O-A-N-W-R-I-G-H-T-G-O-O-D. No E at the end. I'm just good like that. <laughs> <laughs> On Facebook, it's Dr. Joan Wright Good. LinkedIn, um, Twitter, all the other platforms is Joan Wright, Joan Wright Good. Good. Yes. Um, and then once they start following me, they'll see the other business um, pages. 
uh, business startup um, page, my publishing page, magazine page. We do also have a magazine that we feature entrepreneurs who are looking for visibility and credibility. And the website is businessstartupacademy.live not dot com dot live so they can go on there and see all the services that we offer meet some of our staff and look at some of the products that we've done and uh, people who we've, who we've partnered with nice very nice so guys you have heard of all that information and i'm sure just like myself you have you're going to garner this information and use it make it fruitful so thank you so much again dr good <laughs> for being on the other side i really really did appreciate it uh, you're and, welcome yes and thank you so much guys for listening to the unfiltered by jade and we'll be back next week tuesday thank you <laughs> Bam, bam,